in three, two, one, stick up. We begin all classes with the dogs in here tied to the wall and being calm. We don't put up with antsiness, we don't put up with anything. If you're gonna take a dog out in the community, that dog has to be calm. There can be no playing. So we start every class. If you take your dog in a car, this is what it looks like. You go into a restaurant, this is what it looks like. You go to someone's home, this is what it looks like. You take your dog to the park, this is what it looks like. Go to a dog show, this is what it needs to look like, or the dog's worn out by the time you get to the ring. You go sit and watch the kids play baseball, that's what it looks like. You go talk to the neighbor, that's what it looks like. You go for a walk in the park, that's what it looks like. Our job with the dog is just like with kids, we want them to be able to succeed in life. Not have us be able to control them. Who wants to walk, who wants to live your life controlling a dog? So the quicker you get over that nonsense, the better you are. When you can turn them off, Every exercise needs an on switch, an off switch, and a dimmer switch. Turn it on. Get the mouses, rats, whatever you want to say. Get them. Good dog. Amp them up. Get them crazy. That's enough. Leave it. Easy. Means you can look at them. <laughs> Easy. Are you ready? Get the rats. <laughs> so you have to have that dimmer switch or it's nothing to 100 miles an hour. You gotta have the in between. Dogs playing too rough, easy. Dogs all worried, easy. That's enough of that. Or when you get to the bigger agility, okay? The dog is crazy. Easy brings them down to a working, reasonable level. Okay? All right, let's get these dogs up and warm them up. Now, walking him like this. This dog is walking through the middle of this room, telling everybody he's the, he's the biggest guy here. Wait. Come on. You're fine. You are fine. Now, if I if I decided I'm over here. Yeah. Oh, you would. If you were a terrier, you would. Okay. So. We are challenging each other. This is sparring. Eye contact. All right. So what would happen then if I'm Bach and I've been calling her out, only truthfully, Bach is smaller than Mary, but from across the room, he's hot shot. We need to be very aware of what... He knows better than do it with me. But when you walked past, you were walking him on a nice little sleeve, absolutely. And he was just looking like this. Did anybody else see that? Yeah. yeah. And so with the terrier, <clears throat> she was minding her own business. He kind of called her out. So if I walked over here, and I've been over there staring you down, what are you going to do? You're going to... Yeah. I mean, from across a classroom, from across the bar, from across the restaurant. It's that. And they, they do their arguing with their eyes. It saves dog fights. Bach believes this is his room. He lives here, but so does Mary. They're not friends. But that doesn't mean, okay, that doesn't mean they can't be reasonable. We just have to be aware of what's going on. Come here, boss. Wait. Truth. 
truthfully, Bach is afraid of her. And he should be. But he can't look like a victim or what happens. She targets it. So we need to be very aware that our dog really is depending on us to let it know how it should act. You're fine. You gotta look down at him now and then. He's doing the right thing. He's behind me. That's where he should be. Well, when we were walking, everybody was... I, I understand that. But I'm saying, you have to glance at him, not just walk. You were walking just right. You were doing absolutely fine, but we have to remember that he's down much lower than everybody else. If you laid on the floor and you saw this room from his point of view, it's scary. I did that one time. I had Wiley. My big shepherd was 115. I set that dog right up on that table and I put a chair down and I let people see what a small dog sees. They, for, they remembered that one. And it's the same thing with this dog. Remember, his job is to keep you safe. Well, what, I don't know exactly what happened. So, yeah. Bach was looking at Mary, and you were not doing anything wrong other than you didn't realize that Bach was looking at Mary. So if I was... Okay. So you need to be very aware of where you're walking and how close you are to a threatening dog. Okay, now, this dog, if you were down on the floor looking up at this dog, that's a pretty scary place to be. So if, if I'm over here, now, Mary was over there, Bach was over here. They're both great dogs. But from across the room, Bach knows which dog in here is the biggest threat. Then when we get close enough, it would be important to say, you're fine. That's what the purpose of this warming them up is, that we establish that we're all safe in here. If you took a little child into a crowd, it's up to you to make sure that child understands there's not a monster in this room we can't deal with. But it changes every day. Now, Buddy has no qualms about not being the leader. But you've got two dogs here that would be leader. Harry wasn't a leader. Bach is. So it's just important that we're more observant. That dog's not afraid to back somebody off. Not at all. And she likes it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. This dog would back people off. Sure. Who wants a dog that would just accept anything? No. We just need to understand. It's like, okay, you got a loaded gun. All right, you're respectful. You make sure nobody messes with it. Treat it respectfully, right? Same thing. There's no problem. You will see individuals, though, that if that dog, Bach perceives that as a threat to you, and when you're that short, get them before they get you. That's where they get the bad reputation. That's where Harry <coughs> was so reactive. He was fearful. Bach has been successful. And again, he turns his back. Good boy, Bucky. Yeah, but he can't do anything. It's all right. Now, along with that, with that breed, it's very important that you realize there are a lot of people that don't know that. Right. Right. Now, Matthew understands that because... Matthew would be the one that you'd walk into the bar and say, 
huh, one guy in here that we'd have to worry about. He knows what that's like. He and Mary are the same. You're kind of a target just because you're big and powerful. Right. Right. Okay, so when you go near the more powerful dogs, you're simply going to remind him he's fine. You are fine. All right. Okay, this terrier and this terrier, we were beginning to spar look that way. Yeah. And probably it would happen with this one. Well, it wouldn't because look at who's in charge of that team. <laughs> now, the hard thing about terriers is most people who own them love that attitude. We like the fact he looks like a little Marine that he struts and we like that. I like that. The beauty of that dog, she walks with so much power and so much presence. We just have to make sure that it's not directed at anybody. That's the police officer. He doesn't walk in supposedly with an ego. Supposedly. <laughs> but he also doesn't sit with his back to the door. Okay, they're not the head of the company. These are the executives. Now there's five breeds that think very much alike. The Karen Terrier, the Lakeland Terrier, Jack Russell Terrier, Airedale, and Pitbull. The difference is intensity level. These two have about the same intensity though. Different size, different capability, but, but same thought process. Okay, praise them up forward. <laughs>